pity God, the compassionate, the merciful, the one who has created everything in utmost perfection. And may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon his pure and beloved messenger, the peak of his creation, the symbol of humanity, the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Allahumma salli ala and his immaculate progeny of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, especially the leader of our time, the awaited savior, Al Imam Al Mahdi, Ajallahu Ta'ala Faraja. May Allah hasten his reappearance and make us all amongst his sincere and dedicated servants. Respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. I sincerely welcome you to our program this beautiful evening here outdoors as we will discuss a very sensitive topic a topic that many youth have on their minds so when we asked some youth about how they feel about going to a masjid to a mosque to a religious institution this was one of their main biggest concerns. I don't feel comfortable going to a mosque because I feel judged. There are people at the masjid who will judge me and that makes me uncomfortable. That pushes me away. This concern is on the minds of many youth in our community. So we figured that we'd address this concern with you in the form of a discussion. Now, before we begin the discussion, I would like to just share with you some introductory remarks about judging others. And there's one very important point. If we fully realize it, it helps us to avoid judging other people. When you look at the world, you see that the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He has created different creations with different capacities. The capacity that you have is different than the capacity that the wall has. It's different than the capacity that a tree has. The capacity that a tree has is different than the capacity that a rock has. Now who created this system in which you find these different types of capacities? Where did that come from? from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He is the most wise, He's the knowledgeable. There is wisdom in having this system. Our challenge in this life is that sometimes we look at our own capacity and we judge everything around us based on that. Now imagine if a tree wants to be judgmental. If a tree judges objects around it. A tree can look at the asphalt here or at a rock or at a wall and it can lecture that rock and say to the rock, look at you pathetic thing. I'm higher than you. I grow. I have different seasons. I'm now nice and colorful, colorful and green. Or as you rock, you've been sitting there for the 20 years and you haven't changed. See how a tree could judge a rock? Many of you are smiling. But imagine if a tree did that. What would you respond to the tree? You would say to the tree, you're a tree. Don't judge something that doesn't have your capacity. A rock is not an organic being like you that can grow. It cannot, you know, grow leaves. So it's inappropriate for you to make that judgment. That's not a fair judgment. Or imagine if you have a beautiful functional device like an airplane. And imagine if on an airplane, some parts brag and judge other parts. The wing can say, look at me, I'm the wing. I'm making you fly. You toilet inside the cabin, what are you doing? You're so low, you're the toilet for all these passengers. No, imagine that. Imagine the scenario, right? But what makes a 
a plane beautiful and functional is that all the parts work together. Without the wing, it cannot fly. Without the engine, it can't fly. Some planes have six million parts. Remove some of those parts, they're not going to fly. It's not just the wing. The wing without those other parts is useless. The wing without the collaboration of all these other parts, it's so useless and it doesn't really have any effect. When you look at this whole universe, realize that the universe is working together. Every part is valuable. Assalamu alaikum. Now apply this to the human being. When God created us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with different capacities. Some people have a higher IQ. Some people have a lower IQ. Some people, some people have higher EQ, emotional intelligence, right? Whereas others might not have that much EQ. Some people are born into rich families, some people into poor families. Some, people's, some people are born into a challenging, difficult environment, violent environment. Some people are born into a safe neighborhood. You see how many millions of factors we have here? We don't all have the same capacity. And many times, because we fail to realize this, we start judging other people. Let's say you're smart. You don't have the patience for people who are not as smart. Have you seen when smart people, they lose patience, right? That's because they fail to understand that others don't have the capacity that you have. We all have different capacities. Even if you're religious, and you're praying, and you're committed to your religion, realize that there are other people who might not have the same background that you have. So don't judge them. You don't know what the person is going through. You don't know what their circumstances are. Be a source of guidance, encourage them, absolutely. Teach them, educate them, absolutely, and appropriately. But don't judge people. Sometimes knowing the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, allows you not to judge others. That is a very important point I wanted to share with you before inshallah now, we open this discussion to address the concerns that many of you have. And that is, do we get judged when we go to the masjid? This is something that probably prevents many people from coming because they do feel that they are judged. So let's have this discussion. And just to give you an example of how some people feel judged, I will share with you the experience of one of my friends. So months ago I was in the office, a brother, a dear community member came to see me and they were recording something, filming something. And then we spoke about why the youth are not as involved in religious programs. Because we have a big community, thousands, tens of thousands of youth in the area. But we don't see much participation. So we were discussing the causes. And then he told me, Sayyid, I'll tell you why. Many youth are not comfortable going to the masjid. I told him why. Who's bothering them at the masjid? Like I'm just innocently asking, right? Who's bothering them? What's going on in masjid that youth don't like? Somebody harassing them there, somebody not welcoming them. What's the problem? He told me, yes, say it. That does happen. Sometimes you don't feel welcome. Sometimes you go to some institutions and you feel like maybe some uh, organizers, some board members, it could be some religious scholars or speakers there who don't really care about you. I told him, can you give me an example? He's like, yes. Many, many years ago, over 10 years ago, I was going through a lot of personal, personal challenges. My friend told me, why don't you make an appointment with, you know, a religious leader there, a sheikh there, and maybe he can help you. It's like, I kind of hesitated. I didn't, I, w I was intimidated. I wasn't really comfortable going there. But my friend really pushed me. My friend really encouraged me. It's like, okay, fine. Finally, finally, I had the courage to make the appointment. He told me, say it. We went into his office and it really took a lot of energy out of me to speak about my personal problem. It wasn't easy for me. So he's like, I'm sitting there. I'm 
my tears are shedding. I'm crying, I'm so emotional talking about this personal challenge. And I see him sitting behind his desk, there was a fish tank. He didn't look at me once and he started to feed his fish. He's like, at that point, I looked at my friend. I'm like, no, why'd you bring me here? He's like, I just wrapped it up. I felt like he didn't care. And I left. I left the office. He told me, say, for maybe 10 years, I was not interested to go to any masjid. It was a bad experience. It was a bad experience. He felt judged. He felt like maybe his personal problem was not important to the other person. So he told me this is one reason maybe why some youth don't come to, don't come to the masjid. So I know that sometimes there are these incidents where maybe someone judged you, you know, maybe someone at the institution did something that pushed you away, you didn't feel any connection, any empathy. That does happen. We don't deny that. But this is why we'd like to address this topic with you. So to start off our discussion, I want to ask you now, how many of you have friends who feel that they will be judged when they are in a religious institution? If you have friends who feel that way, raise your hand. Okay, so I see a number of hands here, the sister's side. Okay, so you know friends who feel judged when they come to the masjid. Now I'd like to ask you some specific questions. Those friends who feel judged coming to the masjid, what do they fear? What kind of judgment concerns them? Can I hear some thoughts? Yes, sister. Hijab, okay. So one of them is hijab. So your friend is concerned that the type of hijab she wears would not be welcome or is it that she's just not wearing hijab altogether? Okay. Okay, that was actually the second question I had for you. So she feels judged. Based on what you know, has there been an incident where somebody said something to her about her hijab? Where maybe someone embarrassed her, someone put her on the spot? Did something like that happen? Okay, so then she's had a personal experience. In the community, okay. But specifically in the masjid, has an incident happened? Okay, but she's still concerned if she comes to the masjid, her hijab will be judged. Okay, so that's one judgment that some people fear and they're concerned about. Their attire, what they are wearing. I am concerned if I go to the masjid, if I go to a religious institution, people will judge my clothing. What am I wearing? How I'm presenting myself? And this applies to brothers and the sisters. I know some brothers who've told me that, you know, maybe I'm not comfortable coming to the masjid. I want to wear my shorts and maybe somebody there is going to judge me. Maybe someone is going to say something, right? So both brothers and sisters have that concern. So this is one type of judgment that has to do with your clothing, outside appearance. Brothers, let's hear from you. Your friends who are concerned about being judged. What type of judgment uh, do they fear? Yes, brother. Um, uh, disability. If you can speak. Disabilities. Okay, how, in what sense? Um, they're scared that the way they'll treat their, their, themselves or, or for example, parents, uh, parents, kids of parents. At the masjid? At the masjid. Okay, so one concern is that for those who have disabilities, their concern is if they go to the masjid, someone at the masjid is going to probably judge them. And or I've, maybe make fun of them. I've actually had cases of that. I've heard of Okay, so there have been actual incidents yeah, where the person was judged at the masjid for a disability. Yeah. Okay, this is a second type of uh, judgment that people fear. Um, let's hear some other types. Sisters, your friends who fear coming to the masjid because of the fear of judgment. What other types of judgment do they fear? So we, we mentioned clothing. 
We mentioned disability. Uh, yes, Hajja, can uh, you give her the mic? I know it's a little bit loud with these airplanes. You're viewed as too religious if you go to the masjid. Okay, that's the other side of the spectrum. That's an interesting one. There are some people who don't go to the masjid or they don't go regularly because they fear their family or their friends will label them as being too religious. Or as some brothers have told me, extreme. One brother says, Sayyid, I love to participate in all the programs. But my family will tell me that you are becoming extreme and we're concerned about that. We don't really want you to go to these religious programs. That's concerning. This is one challenge that some people have. Another brother told me, Sayyid, I came twice to the masjid in one month. My family started, me, started to call me Sheikh. In a derogatory way, of course, not in an encouraging way, right? <laughs> so that is one concern that some people have. They fear being judged by going to the masjid because the, the label of too religious will be applied to them. So that is a third type of judgment. Uh, let's examine a fourth type. Uh, yes, uh, brother, let's hear from you and then I'll get to the other brothers. What is another type of judgment that people fear? Uh, it was like one, one time experience where uh went to a different sect uh, of uh, masjid and uh, during, I think it was during Rupan, so uh, the timing of, uh, of, you know, like, of the prayer, star and, yeah, the star prayer. and uh, you know, like the way how it's just slightly different, like, Malat Amin, Ma'amin, Qanud, Ma'ku Qanud, Hatta Thank you for sharing that. So we can say that the other type of judgment is that you might go to a religious institution and you may not necessarily practice your school of thought the way they do. And they'll call you out. They'll tell you this is wrong. And that could push some people away. Yes, that is another type of judgment. Very valid. Uh, brother, yes. Just to add to what brother said here, uh, he, he talked about different things, right? But it does happen uh, also within the same uh, sect, right? Being Shia, right? Unfortunately, um, we, you know, the Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, you name it, right? We come from our countries and sometimes we bring our divisions here to the community, uh, even within the same, you know, being all Shia, for example. Right, where you go to a, a masjid where people will judge you, saying, you know, you were, for example, Lebanese, you should not go to that one, right? Or you're Iraqi, why you go to So that you one? have the ethnic or, judgment and here. Exactly, unfortunately, we bring this, um, you know, bad things um, uh, here, and, and that's, that's, in my opinion, one of the biggest things here in the community where people judge you uh, because, you know, the perception they have that is that is a very good point over here sometimes we fear the judgment of ethnicity if I go to this masjid they might have their own divisions and I come from an ethnic background I don't really feel welcome because of that ethnic background that does happen just recently in Shahar Ramadan I was uh, in another state and we were having iftar community iftar at a table and so we had you know brothers at the table from a certain country and they were speaking Arabic. There was someone who did not speak Arabic. Originally, the person was from a different country. So I tried to speak in English just to make him, you know, part of the table. But they kept speaking Arabic and asking their questions in Arabic. And I guess I made a mistake once I answered in Arabic, right? The guy became angry. He like slammed his arm on the table He's like, enough is enough. I don't feel welcome anymore. You guys are talking Arabic. You're not welcoming me. If I'm not from this ethnicity, that means the masjid is not from me. 
we, we had to calm the guy down, right? But he really felt that way. And maybe the other brothers were not being too sensitive uh, to this person. I tried my best, but you know, we're sitting like half an hour on the table. You know, it's bound to happen. Sometimes when you repeatedly get a question in a certain language, you might answer in that language. So yes, that is the judgment of ethnicity, unfortunately. That is reflected in some religious institutions. Um, the young brother here, did you have uh, something to share? Okay, we'll, we'll wait for you. Um, I, a brother in the back, yes. Can you give the mic to the brother in the back? He had his hand up. So what is um, a type of judgment that, let's say, your friends would have concerns about coming to the masjid? Uh, I have some friends who don't pray or they pray differently so there's some new things out there. Uh, they fear that people will judge them for or shame them rather for not being a part of the group okay so specifically about salah and prayer they fear if they come to the masjid and they don't pray they'll be shamed or they don't pray correctly they will be shamed or uh, if they pray differently that they don't both okay both of them so either they don't pray they'll be shamed or they will pray differently and they will be shamed. Okay, so that is, that is a concern that some people might have. Now, those friends that you know, do you think an actual incident happened at the masjid that makes them feel this way? Or it's just a concern that they have? Like, did one of them come to the masjid and they were shamed for praying differently or for not praying altogether? Uh, I'm not certain, but... I think they've probably heard stories about people who have been shamed and okay. fear themselves. So it may not necessarily have been a personal incident with them, but maybe something they heard. That, that is a good point. The reason why I ask that is because sometimes we hear of a story and the way our brain works, it takes an incident that you hear about and it generalizes it and it projects it on all institutions. So when I've spoken to some brothers and sisters about the fear of judgment, many times I've realized it's not a personal thing that has happened with them, but it's the fear of being judged. Why? Because I heard of a story of someone who got judged, and so I don't want to be judged. So just to let you all know that not everyone who fears judged has had a personal experience. More often than not, it's something they've heard and then that translates into fear on their part. So sometimes there might be an institution that doesn't judge anyone along these lines that you have mentioned. But still there might be thousands of people who are intimidated, they're not comfortable to go to this place because of a story that they've heard or a post that they've read online. It's important to know that. It's important to know the reality out there and the perception out there. That, that is very helpful. Sisters, any example that you would like to share? Yes, sister in the back. If uh, uh, Brother Ali, can you give them the mic? Okay, that is an excellent one. So sometimes some adults don't come to the masjid because they feel like they don't know enough and that could put them on the spot coming to the masjid where there might be an expectation that if you're coming to the masjid, you should have some level of knowledge and that is what's intimidating them. Now I'd like to ask you the same question. Do you think that is based on an actual incident that happened with one of the mothers or it's just the perception? Okay, so it's more of a perception, not necessarily actual incidents that have happened. Okay, Th thank you for sharing that. That's a very valid one. 
Uh, yes, sister. Because he said the loud salawats, yes. yeah. So that's very that was very discouraging to me as a mother and for my children. Alhamdulillah, my children like coming to the mosque. And Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, kids, even when they were kids, to, to her point, there were a lot of discouraging um, comments from people that are at the mosque that are volunteering, which would discourage my children. You know, they were like, I don't like going to this particular mosque because so and so person always yells at me. Right. Sometimes that has happened, and yes. that intimidates the children. Yeah. But the very, very um, hurting was last year when the person shushed him. And they just called them out, right, right yeah. there. And gave him a very dirty look. That's I unfortunate. So, um, you know, so I, I, you know, I, I feel for what she's saying about children, where we do feel like I feel sometimes that we're not being heard. Yes. And it's a, it's a depends on the place I go to, to be honest, because sometimes I feel that you know my son is not accepted because he's loud. Or, you know, if he's doing something, I shouldn't have to because this is a place that I'd like to feel comfortable and feel welcome. I can understand why you would have that concern. That's, that's very unfortunate. Hassouni, where are you? Raise your hand. Uh, let's hear a loud salawat from you. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. MashaAllah. May Allah bless him. So these are some concerns that we heard from you. The fear of being judged. It is a very valid fear and it's unfortunate. But now let's think of some solutions in order to address this. And the solution is not that easy because different institutions have different environments, right? What could be applicable to one mosque, to one masjid, to one youth group, to one institution may not necessarily apply to other institutions, right? But here are some recommendations to address this challenge of being judged. Here, here are my recommendations. As a general principle in life, if there is a place, program, that is beneficial for you, for your spiritual growth, for your mental and intellectual growth, for your academic growth, if there is a place that's beneficial for you, benefit from that place, even if there are people there who will judge you. Because at the end of the day, if I don't seek that spiritual growth or academic growth or intellectual growth because of the fear of judgment, at the end of the day, whose loss is it? Whose loss is it? It's my loss, right? And there are people out there who might be obstacles in your path to success. That's part of the trial of this life. My invitation and brotherly advice to every dear brother and sister here in the community. If you know something's beneficial for you, you have Allah, the, man the manager of the universe with you. Rely on Allah and proceed. Don't be so concerned with judgment. Because whatever you do in life, you'll be judged. The Prophet was judged, sallallahu alayhi wa And he's the greatest creation of God. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib was judged. Every Imam of Ahl al-Bayt was judged. Imam Hussein, until this day, there are ignorant people who criticize him for rising against the ruler of his time. 14 centuries, there are still people who judge him. Don't let the fear of judgment stop you from doing that which is good and that which is beneficial. Because at the end of the day, it's my loss if I didn't spiritually grow, intellectually grow because of the fear of judgment. Even if there are some people who judge you, as long as you're benefiting from this place, from this program, participate in the program. Pursue this path, whether it's your academics, whether it's your spiritual growth, whatever it is, if there are some people who label you as being too religious, 
At the end of the day, if you're coming to the masjid, to the youth programs, you're benefiting, you're intellectually and spiritually growing, it's bringing you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let them judge you. Their judgment should not stop you from progress. It's your life, not their life. They have their lives to live. It's your growth, it's your success. If we want to pay attention to the judgment of people, no one would become successful. You would not have a successful businessman. You'd not have a successful teacher. You wouldn't have anyone successful in society because the reality is everyone gets judged. Everyone. In school, you're judged. In college, you're judged. At the mall, you're judged. You're judged everywhere. Yes, there are types of judgment. Judgments vary from one institution to another institution, from one setting to another setting. Sure, it's not one type of judgment across the board. There are types of judgment. But no matter where you go, what you do, you will be judged. Unfortunately, that's the challenge of this life. Anywhere you are, you'll be judged. Even when you don't come to the masjid, you'll get judged. You go to the masjid, you'll get judged. Sure, I admit that. Regardless of what you do, someone will judge you. Therefore, do that which pleases God and what's beneficial to you. If this place is beneficial for me, go there. This program is for me, go with the program. Don't let others sabotage your success because of their judgment. It's my loss if I do that. That is one brotherly advice I would share with everyone. And this applies to everyone, believe me, from the Prophet ﷺ till the last human being. Don't let the judgment of people derail you from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the path of goodness, from the path of spiritual growth, educational growth, intellectual growth. So it's, it's, it's unfortunate that we get judged. It hurts, it hurts. The Holy Quran has to console the Prophet. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Imagine the greatest creation of God. And he's ala khuluqin azim. The highest moral character, the mountain of patience. The Quran has to give him consolation. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ Ya Rasulullah, we know, we acknowledge that your heart becomes tight, depressed because of what they say, because of their judgments. But it's okay, you have Allah. Glorify Allah, fall into sujood. Let Allah give you that power. It hurts to be judged. It really hurts to be judged. But I can train myself to rise above this concern. Because I know at the end of the day, I want success for myself and my family. I won't let anyone hijack my success in the form of a judgment that they pass on me. Whether it's in person that they say it to me, it's on social media, it doesn't matter. Having that inner strength is one of the greatest tools for success that anyone can have. So it's unfortunate, but it's unavoidable. There is no place that you can go to that's free of judgment, my dear brothers and sisters. There's no place on the face of the planet. Even if you go to the house of Allah in Mecca at the Kaaba, you're not free from that. There is no place on earth that's free from judgment. But that is the trial of the believer. That is the trial of every human being. What's important is Allah's judgment. Allah's pleasure, Allah's satisfaction, not the people. So even if there's a masjid, if I'm benefiting at that masjid, and there's someone there at the masjid who's going to judge me, it's unfortunate, we should do something about it, but don't let that derail you. Don't let that stop you and your children and your family from benefiting. That would be unfair to do that to yourself. So this is one, one recommendation that I have. Any thoughts you'd like to share about this point before I share with you the second point? Any personal experience? Yes. You can just think about it. Not necessarily yes. Brother Ali, can you give them the mic? Oh. You can just think about it, not like as a judgment, more maybe as a person. The person that's saying it maybe is just making an excuse for themselves for not going. So just don't even pay any attention to it to begin with. Don't even give it a second thought. They're making excuses for themselves to make themselves feel good for not coming. And that's it. 
Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, sometimes they're just making up excuses for themselves, so they're comfortable with not coming and they kind of, you know, want to make you feel bad not to go. Yes, that, that sometimes does happen. Yes, brother. Um, I, I know there's another point, so I'm not sure if you're gonna talk about this, but in my opinion, we, so far we focus on what the individual would have to do, right? To avoid that, um, you know, being judged. But don't you think also that the centers that is my second okay. point, yes. Okay. Because we have to address the solution too. E exactly, because uh, I believe they also have a... A hundred percent. ...to come with a creative strategy to, to help those people who have concerns. A hundred percent. So that was the first point. It generally in life, don't let judgments derail you from a good path. But the second point is, when there are these judgments in community centers and messages, we definitely have to do something about it. So here's, here's my recommendation. If you feel judged at a masjid, at a youth group, at any program, I encourage all of you, do something about it. Don't sit idle and say, that's it, I'm not coming there. Because remember, at the end of the day, the masjid belongs to who? Allah. Who? Allah. Say it louder, who? Allah. Board? Astaghfirullah. Who? Allah. Let me hear it louder. God. Allah. 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 See, every masjid is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to any individual, any family, any board. They might give that impression, but they're wrong. At the end of the day, it's Allah's place. It's the community's place. So don't, if you're judged, don't say, you know what? Too bad, I'm, I'm judged, I'm not coming anymore. No, that's your masjid. It's Allah's masjid, it's the community's masjid. Do something about it. Approach the organizers of the program, approach the board, approach anyone there. And number one, tell them that you've been judged. Many times, many times, it's someone acting on their own and others don't even know about it. So the first thing that you, have, that you have to do, go up to the organizers and raise this issue. If it was someone from the organizers who passed the judgment, you have to go and confront them. Let's say, alhamdulillah, inshallah here in our youth group, there's no judgment. But let's say, if one of you felt judged, you see brother Ali Ghazala, we call him Ali G. You're gonna go to him, you can hold him from here, from his t-shirt. Just kidding. <laughs> be, be kind. Tell him, Ali G, I need to talk to you. I feel like one of the organizers judged me. I'm inviting everyone to do this. Everyone to do this. And I'm serious about this. Go to them, let them know. Sometimes they don't know. Sometimes they need to know what happened. So it's, it's addressed and it's not repeated. This is really helpful. If everyone who's judged does their part in going and bringing awareness to the organizers about what's happening, it will be significantly reduced. So do something about it. Don't just go home and then feel sad and then start bash the masjid and then never you know, step your foot in there for the rest of your life. That's the masjid of Allah. Don't let the masjid of Allah down. You also have a responsibility in the community for these masajid because they belong to Allah. They don't belong to any certain group. They're your masajid. So when you just stop going there, I mean, if imagine if everyone says, you know what, I'm not going to the Kaaba anymore. I'm not going to the shrine of Imam Hussein anymore because somebody judged me there. So should we shut them down? Of course not. Should we shut them down? No. Of course not. Because at the end of the day, this is your place too. You want people to benefit from this place. So if there's something wrong that's happening, go and try to fix it effectively, appropriately. And let's say you went to Brother Ali G. That day, haram, he's had a very long day. Okay, maybe he didn't quite, you know, uh, see what the problem was. Let's say he didn't follow up because there were so many things on his mind. Don't give up. Come again, see somebody else. 
Be persistent, my dear brothers and sisters. People who are persistent in reaching a solution, they always reach a solution, believe me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes you to a solution with persistence. So feel the obligation to also correct it when you see others judging. So it's wrong for people like that to pass a judgment. It's definitely wrong. We condemn that. However, also try to fix it yourself by bringing awareness about it. Just go to them and address it. For instance, that incident with the salawat, my recommendation would have been to go and meet the organizers and tell them. Tell them my son is here, he's enthusiastic, he's showing his love for Ahlul Bayt. Okay, I apologize if he was too loud, maybe he distracted some people, but for you to give him that look really hurt him and hurt me. Address it with them. They'll, sometimes they'll apologize, you know, it won't happen. So, you did reach out to them, how did it go? It went pretty well, okay. So, I'm, I, I mean, I admire that the fact that, that, that you did reach out to them. So, reach out to them when you feel judged. That's, that's the second recommendation. Yes, brother. I have a question related to judgment versus constructive criticism. When does it really, uh, like, is there a line where, how do like, let's say uh, I, I receive constructive criticism, but it's constant, I don't learn that fellow brother or sister, like, kept explaining it, but I just don't learn, and I feel like it's just. That's a very good point. That's actually the third point. The third point is sometimes something needs attention and correction. But how do you go about correcting it? Right? We live in an era, in a society, in which if I'm not part of your close circle of friends, I'm not allowed to comment on anything about your life. Is that healthy or not? That's, that's a discussion, right? Is this good or not? If everyone feels that way, then how do you uphold the Islamic values of al-ma'ruf wa nahi al munkar right? In joining the good and forbidding the evil. So one example that one of the sisters mentioned is the attire, the hijab, right? It, this, uh, this applies to the brothers and the sisters. So we understand that there are certain places where you are expected to have a professional attire, right? I mean, if it's the day of your graduation and you're going on stage, isn't there an expectation that you should be dressed modestly, appropriately, right? Or imagine if you're going to a very important professional job interview. Isn't there a certain attire that you have to observe? Now, let's say I don't. I go to my graduation with whatever, you know, with my pajamas. Imagine you go to your graduation with your pajamas. If somebody judges you there, right? Or points it out, or constructively criticizes you, right? And then you get hurt. I'm just having a discussion here. I'm not passing a judgment. Do you think that the one who may have judged you or criticized that is entirely here to hold accountable or no? If you went to your graduation with your pajamas and people started saying a few things, what would you say about a situation like that? Don't come to the graduation with pajamas again. You would say, okay, next time if you're coming to another graduation, not sure if you'll have another graduation, but if you're coming to another graduation, <laughs> Maybe you should not wear pajamas. See, I think sometimes it's also helpful that when you're going to a community center, to a masjid, to a place, right? It's, it's wrong for others to judge you, of course. It's, it's not helpful. But at the same time, take some steps to avoid some of that judgment, right? By, for instance, dressing in a professional way. For instance, I know it's a sensitive point. But I think what our society today is teaching our youngsters, especially on TikTok, it's teaching our youngsters, wear whatever you want, 
nobody has the right to say anything about it. Is that healthy? Where do you draw the line? I mean, imagine what's going to happen the next five years, the next 10 years. If nobody says anything, then where's our moral obligation? It's a complex situation, right? It's a very complex situation. Here's my recommendation for everyone. If you see someone doing something that between you and God requires attention, requires that you point it out, find an effective way to address it and correct it. And many times it means you cannot go to the person directly. Because as I said, we live in a society in an era where if you're not my close friend, I'll be offended if you point something about my whatever, my character, my clothing, my body, whatever it is. So let's say, let's say I see a brother, maybe he's not in the appropriate attire for the setting. Let's say, as an example. Instead of going to him directly, what I can do is go to his friend his best friend. And I tell him, look, you're his best friend. If I speak to him directly, he might feel judged, he might be offended. But for these reasons, this attire is not the best of attires here. Let's say you're at that graduation and you know, it's not really good to come with the pajamas. So go to the friend and tell him, can you address it with your friend? That's a safer way. Because that person is more likely to accept that advice from their friend. So when you see something that requires constructive criticism, as you put it, maybe directly addressing it with them is not helpful these days. It's just the way our society is. Find another way to get the message across. Go to one of their friends. Or go to a friend who's a friend with their friend. Sometimes you need to do that in order for you to be effective. So I'm not saying, hey, stop abandoning your obligation. You know, that's it. Because we just live in 2022, there's no Amr bil Ma'ruf and Nahi al Munkar anymore. I'd be a dishonest scholar if I were to tell you that. I would be betraying the Holy Quran if I were to tell you that. Because the Quran says, this is an obligation. Ya'muruna bil Ma'ruf wa yanhawna an al Munkar. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lil nas. Ta'muruna bil Ma'ruf wa tahnhawna an al Munkar. This is an Islamic principle that you show people guidance. If they're doing something wrong, you point it out. If they don't know their religious obligations, you try to educate them about that. This is our obligation. I'm not asking anyone here to abandon this obligation, but find a way that's effective and not flammable. Not a flammable way, right? One that is effective indirectly through their friends, that would be very, very helpful. I know it's almost time for Adhan, so any, any concluding thoughts, remarks that you'd like to share? So to summarize the points of our discussion is that as believers, remember in the introductory point, we shouldn't judge others. People have different backgrounds, different capacities, different life experiences. Even if you think you're religious and others are not, still don't put them down. Even in your mind, don't think that you're better than them. The Imams of Ahlul Bayt have prohibited us from doing that. The second point is, don't let the judgment of people stop you from success. That was the second point. The third point, address it. Go to that institution, go to that masjid, go to the organizers and tell them, you know, this was not okay, I felt judged here. Talk to them. Many, many times it will be positive, trust me. Maybe not every time, but many, many times, like the sister mentioned here, it was okay, it was positive. So try to do something about it. So, and, and the last point that we shared is that when it comes to, uh, you know, something that you really need to point out, it's okay. Do it indirectly in a way that it doesn't backfire. Uh, yes, brother. Brother Ali, can you give Hajj Hassan the mic? What about inviting people to come to the mosque? Not, tell them they're not going to be judged. Or how, how do you tell them they're not going to be judged? Or explain to them that it's not that big of a deal to go to the mosque. That's a very good point. How do you tell the people, look, it's okay. You can come to the masjid. Inshallah, you won't be judged. You'll be welcome. Because as all of you have realized, many of the concerns your friends have are just 
their impression, how they feel, not necessarily an incident that happened with them. So you really want to tell the community, look, it's not as bad as you think it is, right? It's not like if you come to the masjid, people are standing there having no life, like the FBI agents, you know, zooming in on you. It's not like that, right? I think sometimes some people have that, have that impression that if I go there, there's going to be a hundred eyes on me. It's, it's not like that. It's not that bad, right? People are going there, they're all going there inshallah to learn and uh, it's not a place where you're going there really to be judged. So the community needs to know. I think the best, most effective method is by word of mouth. Because even if you give 10 lectures about this, those who feel judged will still feel judged. I think they need their friends to help them. So what I recommend is all of you go to those friends that you said have that fear. Tell them, look, come with me next time. I'll come, I'll pick you up, let's go, let's go together. I guarantee you it will be a positive experience. I've been going to the youth group for the last two years. I've never had an incident, it's okay. And even if God forbid an incident happens, I promise you we'll address it. We won't let it just go like that. So I think by word of mouth, if you communicate that to your friends and encourage them, tell them, come, you will not get, get judged, it's okay. You'll benefit. It's a really good program. If you don't go, it's your loss. I think by word of mouth, if we can spread the word in the community, that would be really, really helpful. And yes, such discussions are also helpful. So I think we need to have more of such discussions in our youth groups, in our lectures, speaking about the dangers of judging others, and giving solutions to people who feel that they are judged. That is definitely helpful. But word of mouth is key. So inshallah, all of you, who attended tonight, um, the homework that I would suggest for you is to reach out to five of your friends whom you think they might be hesitant to come because of the fear of judgment. Tell them, look, it's not as bad as you think. Don't worry. Come next week with me. I'll guarantee you, you won't be judged. No one's going to bother you. Let them hear these words of encouragement. They are really, really helpful. Very helpful. And if we all do our part, inshallah, we can create a better environment where we always as a community can come together and we can have beneficial programs and discussions, inshallah. My dear brothers and sisters, the, do we have the ice cream? Yes. The ice cream is waiting for you. It's warm, so you don't want it to melt. So let's go and have our ice creams. We have a few minutes till the salah, inshallah. I would like to just make sure no stampede happens. I would like to thank you all for participating in our program tonight. Thank you for your openness to discuss this very sensitive topic.